Hey, what up, world? It's your man, Bouchon Glover, and uh, you know, have a reaction on what happened to Hamlin, the defensive back for the Buffalo Bills. Now, the crazy thing about it is you have uh, professionals like Skip Bayless and on uh, Undisputed, Skip and Shannon, uh, Stephen A. Smith, first take. And I watched the shows this morning uh, to get some insight on what happened, and I didn't get any insight. All I got was a scriptless show, and these professionals are showing us that uh, if they don't have a script, if there's a critical situation, that they can't really talk about it. Because we have to make sense of what happened. And what happened uh, was what the league asked for. The league didn't want the helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. The league don't want a lot of the physicalness because of uh, concussions and things that could happen over time. And Stephen A. Smith um, said that it reminds him of Hank Gathers. And I remember watching a game when Hank Gathers was at the free throw line and he collapsed. And Hank Gathers had heart issues. Um, he's collapsed before. And this was a situation where there was a foul. And then he went to the free throw line and um, he fell and uh, never came back uh, to us. But in this situation, Stephen A. Smith said, and I do give him credit, he said, what appears to be, you know, a regular routine tackle. No, that was not. If you think about a defensive player, defensive players uh, can get fined, uh, could get kicked out of the game, you know, for dropping their pad level and making a tackle that will protect them. When you protect yourself, you drop your shoulders, you bring your head up and you see your target. But in this particular situation, Hamlin didn't drop. It looked like he didn't want to uh, bring the funk, what I'm saying, bring that power hit that can actually get him fine. So he came up and he took the blow from a receiver. OK, this was the wide receiver that he had the collision with. And in this collision, he left his chest wide open. OK, and then the softest part in the way you can knock somebody out is in the chin. We all watch boxing. And you see boxers get hit in the chin, boom, and they try to get up and they fall all over the place, right? And, and uh, uh, Trevor Bowe, uh, Riddick Bowe, Trevor Burbick is the one that really comes to mind. But it's been many that took that shot in the chin, got up too fast, and been just falling around and everybody laughing at them because they can't get their balance because their equilibrium is off. But in this case, he got up fast from an instinctive perspective, just like, you know, your adrenaline and your muscle memory, just like those boxes will pop up, okay? And then they'll figure it out after the fact because they'll fall. But then boxers begin to learn when you're not all the way there, when your bearings is not there, instead of trying to get up and pop up and be a man and say, hey, you know, I got up, take that knee. So a lot of boxers will sit there, count one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, they'll pop up, eight, and the referee will say, grab my hands, walk to me. And if they walk to me, okay, you good. And if they start stumbling, the referee will say, it's over. So in this case, this brother, instead of bringing that funk like DBs do, he didn't want to be fined because the league don't want you tackling like this to protect yourself, and we knew it was going to happen. So this particular situation, he took a blow in the chest, which we... Been hit, I've been hitting the chest before. You could bruise your chest. And like I said, your heart is not too far because if you perform CPR, you're crushing and causing small fractures in the chest because the heart is right behind your, your breastplate when it comes to your skeletal. So look, he took the shot in the, in the chest. But I'm going to add a picture right here, a freeze frame of getting hit in the chest and giving up his chin. So when he got hit in the chest and chin area, he was knocked out. He was knocked out. But he got up so fast, and before he could even fix his face mask or anything, he fell back. And this is the part that hurts my heart when it comes to these professional outlets. And you might not even see this video because they like to, you know, strip expert opinion off the Internet and somehow, you know, let their layman's do it who work for their networks with their script because today they're scriptless. So it's, it's, it's eerie watching the shows. So in this particular case, he got hit in the chest, boom, in a chin shot from the crown of the offensive player's helmet, 
which caused the knockout. He popped up too fast like the boxers do. So instead of falling around, he fell straight back. And when he fell straight back, he hit his head on the ground, just like Tua did, you know, when he was throwing up the signs, just like Antonio Brown did. I mean, and this is where he lost all consciousness. So when you have that disconnect, you know, your brain can't send that message to breathe. So this is why when they came out, they, saw, they started performing CPR because he went into cardiac arrest and he did not have a pulse, okay? But they did get his heart back to working before he got in the ambulance. And the sad part about it is we usually get the thumbs up or something, but in this case, it just, it just seems real bad. So now there's still not any updates. So sometimes, you know, no news is good news, but oftentimes, you know, we don't know. So we have to pray for this brother and pray for his family. But I just had to go on record because nobody's talking about what happened. We're just talking about as if this brother just collapsed. He did not just collapse. He took a shot to the chest, a shot to the chin, okay, which got him woozy. And when he stood up and got up too fast, like boxers do, Instead of, you know, taking this time and saying, whoa, let me just chill for a second, catch my breath and catch everything, get my bearings together, and stand up. He popped up from a muscle memory perspective, fell back down, knocked himself out, unconscious, so he couldn't even, you know, respond. That's why you go to him and you hit him. You know, if something like that happened, you hit him, you, you wake him up. Hey, 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 hit their hands. Hey, you hear me? You hear me? You know, bring him back. But in this case, he didn't, so they had to perform the CPR and bring his heart back okay so now no news it's no news and 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 you know we're praying for him you know but the league wanted this type of football i knew this was going to happen because it's like a defense a, a defensive player will hurt himself if he don't come correct all he did was I'm not going to be fine. I'm not going to drop my head. I'm not going to do the helmet to helmet thing because when we drop our head, they drop their head. So he stayed up and absorbed the impact, which hit him in the chest, hit him in the chin, which got him woozy. And he popped up and he wasn't ready to pop up and he fell, hit his head again on the ground. Hard. OK, and this is where we at. So there's no updates, but I just wanted to go on record. Because I went on uh, TV and was searching and trying to find out what happened and getting this expert opinion. And I see these experts just become non-experts, really didn't have anything to say. And then they equate things to, these are things we've never experienced. I mean, come on, man. You know, if you in your 50s and play football, we play, had helmets called Riddles, Rydells. Our coaches had smelling sauce in their pocket. They will put the smelling sauce in, uh, we wake up, oh, man. And they laugh at us. Put one finger in our face and say, how many fingers you see? We say three. And they say, pick the one in the middle. You pick the one in the middle, get back in the game. That's crazy. So what I'm saying is, I mean, a lot of times when you try to fix certain things over here, then you find another situation. So now defense players are saying like, wow, do I get fined for protecting myself and blasting the offensive player? Or do I suffer collateral damage by playing the way the league wants me to.